And I have drafted up five reasons, and then I'm gonna share with you today as to why you might not be uh, closing your inquiries. So the first one is you're not communicating your value. I'm not gonna blow anyone's top with that. And none of these are gonna be overly surprising, but there are five things to look at when you're looking at why you're not closing. Are you communicating your value? And it can't just be, I'm super experienced or I have a pretty rig, right? Um, sometimes that's enough, but not always. You have to communicate your value. What are you doing for people, right? What is your value? Why would someone spend $2,000 to have you come on site if other people are out there doing it for less? I'm not asking you to drop your prices. Please don't drop your prices. That's not the point. The point is, is if you wanna charge higher rates, if you wanna charge the rates that your competitors are, or even more, high bruise and bubble Philly, uh, then you need to communicate the value in a way that is makes them like, oh my gosh, yeah, why wouldn't I spend? How could I not spend you know, that money, right? Um, and that might look different for everyone. Everyone's value might be a little bit different, right? You know, Bar Magnolia says that we make things easy for people. A lot of times people will pay for ease. At least my ideal clients will. That's why I'm going after them because they're the people that are like, I want, I just want easy, right? That's my value proposition. What's your value proposition? And are you communicating that? Is it on your Instagram profile? Is it on your website? Is it in your email, you know, uh, correspondences? What are you telling, what is your value and are you telling them what that is? A lot of times I'll see it, a mission statement, but I'll never see it anywhere else in anyone's communication. They don't, they don't mention it on any of their social media profiles. Um, they don't mention it in their email communications. Um, and you have to remind people a lot as to what your value is. It's not bragging. It's not, I promise you. If they know what your value proposition is, then they will start to believe it. It's funny because sometimes you just have to tell people what you want them to get out of an interaction and that's what they'll walk away from with that interaction. I always use the example when I'm doing a cocktail tasting and someone comes in and sits down, I'll tell them, I want this to be the best, your favorite part of the event planning process. Whether or not it's the favorite part of their event planning process, chances are they're gonna walk away and be like, that's the, my favorite part of the planning process. Why? For a number of reasons. One, there's booze. Uh, we have a good time, um, but I've planted that seed that I want it to be the best, and that's what they walk away with, right? So are you communicating your value? That's number one. Number two, you actually don't believe that you're worth that price. This is, I'm looking, I'm staring right into your eyes right now because I can tell you I was one of those people. When I got married 10 years ago, two weeks ago it was 10 years, I couldn't afford me. I could not afford my mobile bar to show up in my own wedding. So it's easy to get into the mindset that what you're asking is too much because many of us came and come from a place where we'd never be able to pay our prices. So there's a disconnect between what you're asking other people to pay and what you would be able to pay. That doesn't mean that you're not worth it because once you get in this and you've been in it long enough, you'll recognize why mobile bars charge as much as they do. There's a ton of work. There's a ton of overhead. It is a ton of effort to lug around hundreds of pounds of ice every weekend. It's not just the four hours of the event or even the four hours before the event and the four hours of the event and the two hours of cleanup after the event. Planning starts way before that. Mental space, emotional space, it's all expensive. It's all, it's all something that needs to be charged. And so just because you couldn't afford your rates doesn't mean you're not worth those rates, right? So if you don't believe in your pricing, if you don't believe that you're worth what you're asking for, no one else is gonna believe it either. You have to believe that what the prices that you have are fair, reasonable, and, and of the value that you're asking for, right? And that means doing the math sometimes. What are your costs? What are you worth? What price can you put on your experience and service that you feel good about? And that's probably the number one thing when it comes to pricing. I work through this with people all the time. Is this the right price for this? While you're covering your costs, yes. Then does it feel good? Does it feel good? Can you stand there and say, this feels good, I'm 100% behind my pricing? Because whether it's $2,000 an event or $800 an event, that's where you should be. If you don't feel good about that pricing, 
you will not sell. You won't. No one's going to book it because you're not quite sure. They're going to be like, ah, oh, I don't know. That seems a little high. And you'll be like, you're right. I'll give you $200 off. And so then they're like, well, geez, was the first one just too high? Or it's because you're not confident in your pricing. But I have literally had people ask, well, do you give a discount? You know, or you're like, whatever. No, because I, my pricing is what I need for continuity. If you want to if you want me to still be around in 10 months when you have your event, my pricing is the way it is because I know it's what I need to make the profits that I want and that I need, but also so that I can still be here when you get there to to your date, right? So number 1, you're not communicating your value. Number 2, you don't actually believe that you're worth the price that you're charging. Number 3, you haven't this one's a good one. And I'm looking, again, I'm looking at all of you because some of you guys are really good about this and others are not really good at this. You're not demonstrating that other people have invested in you. It's great that you guys have great pictures from your styled shoots. It's great that you have you know, beautiful uh, friends and family that support you. But are you sharing the people who have paid you? Are you sharing their testimonials? Are you sharing candid behind the scenes photos of you being at other people's events? And I'm not talking influencers. Those are great. If you can get them and you can get, you know, and not necessarily nonprofits either, because a lot of time the people are like, oh, well, that you probably did that for free. Do you have testimonials? Are you sharing stories and photos of you being at people's events that have paid you? It's easy to put a testimonial in there, put it in your highlights, put it on your website. People look for it, you look for it. It's why you love Amazon. I'm talking to each and every one of you. Because you can go through and be like, oh, these 50 people have already purchased this and this is what they think. So I feel safe. You want people to feel safe handing you $2,000, $3,000, then you have to demonstrate other people have already trusted you, right? If you're just starting out, it could be, a, a, a testimonial to your character. It may not be a paying person, maybe it's somebody who just can literally give a testimonial about what a great trustworthy person you are, how long you've been in the industry, right? You need to be trusted. And so if you wanna charge the prices that you're, that you're charging, make sure people trust you. If you're new, that's okay. People are willing to invest in new people. They just need to trust you. Okay, so first, you're not communicating your value. Two, you don't believe you're worth the prices that you're actually charging. Three, you haven't demonstrated that other people trust you and that other people have invested with you. Number four. Oh, this one's a good one. You aren't relatable or demonstrating that you're solving a problem they have. You aren't relatable in that you're solving a problem that people have, all right? And so here's a good one. And I don't see this one a lot with us, and I don't mind this, but if someone is out there saying that they're an affordable mobile bar option, that's a problem people have. I'm gonna be honest there. A lot of people are out there looking, and I saw it, I saw it on, in a Facebook, group that I was in the other day, this woman was like, I've seen all these adorable beverage carts and these mobile bars and I want one at my wedding. I would love to have one at my wedding. My budget is $600. I can feel all of you right now. Like, okay, that's not happening. I'm not rolling on site for $600. I'm sorry. Like, it's just not happening. There's too much overhead in what we do for 600 bucks, right? It's not impossible to do it at 600 bucks. Someone out there could do it for 600 bucks. And so if they wanted to address that problem by being the most affordable mobile bar in the area, in their you know service area, they could do that. They could, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying I would sign up for it. I'm saying that could be, it's a relatable problem that they're solving and they could go out there and they could do that. And that would, they'd be very popular. Why? because they are relatable and they're solving a problem that people actually have. That was just one example. What's another problem that people have? Solve that problem and then go out there and tell people that you're solving that problem, right? <laughs> Dannon's past. Me too, me too. But if you, know, if, if, that's, if you want to be a mobile bar that gets a ton of people, it's a great way to do it. Drop your prices, super, super low, be affordable. 
Okay. The last one. Oh, let me do the rundown again because some people are just now joining. You're not communicating your value. You don't believe you're worth the price. You haven't demonstrated to, to people that other people have actually invested in you or trust you with their money. You aren't relatable or solving a problem that they actually have. And number five, and this one is I'm super passionate about because I just worked on this one this week with my private clients. You aren't delivering on your brand promise. You are creating an inconsistent experience. Each and every one of you guys has created a brand promise whether you believe it or not. Whether you know that you have done it or not, you have. A brand promise is literally your brand. Okay, it's your colors, your voice, your logo, the photos you put on Instagram, your website. You're creating a promise. You're putting an ima- you're you're enabling people to imagine what it would be like to work with you, who you are. You are creating a brand promise. Okay, what happens if you're beautiful on Instagram? Your website is perfect. They inquire with you and you're a hot mess. You never respond, your, your replies are super unprofessional, you have, they have questions you can't answer, there's a lot of hemming and hawing or whatever, right? That's an inconsistent brand experience, and so that's a jolting experience. And we've all had this, right? You, 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 maybe it's, you know, you go to some place every week and then you show up one time and it's a shit experience and you're like, oh, that was inconsistent and really unpleasant because I thought I knew what to expect and they didn't deliver. Now. This obviously isn't one of those times because we don't typically have a ton of repeat experience, right? And, and, and if you do have a ton of repeat experience, that's actually gold because you can come back from that. But if all you have are the one and dones, the people that come through your website, come through your Instagram, and you have one chance to, to live up to the expectations that you've set and you fail, they will not spend money with you. They won't. Even if they're expecting one thing because that's what you put out there, and they get something that's totally suitable and fine, but doesn't match up with the expectation that you've set beforehand, they're gonna feel, what am I gonna get? This seems really inconsistent. I'm not sure what to expect here. And so they're not gonna trust you enough to spend their money with you. You have to provide a consistent experience. Whatever your brand voice is, whatever your brand promise is, you have to deliver time and time again with every interaction. If you have one thing on your website, they need a consistent experience on your Instagram, a consistent experience on your Facebook, a consistent experience in the lead funnel, a consistent experience with every email interaction and, and, and phone interaction because that builds trust, consistency, predictability. They know what to expect from you. They will spend money with you. Okay, so those were your five, five reasons people may not be spending their money with you, why you can't close those deals. You're not communicating your value. You don't believe that you're worth the price. You haven't demonstrated that other people actually trust you enough to invest with you, and so why should they? You aren't relatably solving a problem that they actually have, and you aren't delivering on your brand promise, and you're creating an inconsistent experience. Easy peasy, right guys? <laughs> All right, I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments. Um, otherwise, I'll catch you on the Facebook group. Thanks everyone.